Hello everyone, welcome to a review of your pediatric inpatient clinical packet. We're going to go over some frequently asked questions during this video and you can refer back to this video when you complete your packets at home. Make sure the first thing you do is enter your name. For pertinent past medical and surgical history, feel free to use abbreviations. If there is a long list and you're unsure of what to include, please ask your clinical instructor. Under History of Present Illness, you'll be including a short story of what brought the patient to the hospital. This should include how the symptoms started, where they went, if anywhere, before arriving to the hospital, and then what happened prior to their admission. This is a good example of the history of present illness. You'll notice that there is no identifiable patient information, but that the patient's age, medical history, and a brief and chronologic account of their illness is provided. There is also pertinent positives and negatives included. For example, it's noted that the patient is wheezing, which is a pertinent positive. But there is also notation that there is no accessory muscle usage or respiratory distress. These are pertinent negatives, both of which help paint a more accurate picture of the patient's condition. If you'd like to review this in more detail, please pause the video now. The next page of the packet is dedicated to pathophysiology and potential complications. Before you complete your pathophysiology section, please discuss which topic you will be writing up with your clinical instructor. Make sure to choose a scholarly reference, such as your textbook, up-to-date, or any academic publisher when writing your pathophysiology section. Remember that you have access to up-to-date at your clinical site. Provide at least five to six sentences explaining the pathophysiology of the disease process. Also try to include any other conditions that your patient might have that may alter the typical course of this problem. For example, a patient with cystic fibrosis would likely experience a viral illness differently than a patient with normal lungs. For potential complications, list two to three things that you are on alert for based on your patient's condition. For each potential complication, list the signs and symptoms that you are monitoring for. If you'd like, please take a moment to pause the video to review the provided example. In the next section, you will be filling out the vital signs that you obtained for your patient. In the space provided below, please include your interpretation of the patient's vital signs and what significance they have to your patient's diagnosis. The provided example relates a high respiratory rate to poor mucus clearance in the patient with bronchiolitis. In the lines, tubes, and drains section, include any intravenous access lines, enteric tubes, drains, catheters, chest tubes, or any other line, tube, or drain that your patient may have. Please also include the assessment of the site. The next section is dedicated to pertinent lab values. On this page, please include the patient's values, the normal range for age, and interpretation, either high, normal, or low. In the next section, you will briefly provide an interpretation of the pertinent lab values that you listed on the previous page. In the provided example, the patient is hyperglycemic and has a metabolic acidosis from DKA. In the following section, you are asked to provide information on any diagnostic studies that are pertinent to your patient's diagnosis. In the provided example, a chest x-ray was obtained in the presence of respiratory symptoms, but did not show any evidence of pneumonia. The next page is dedicated to medications. Please discuss this page with your clinical instructor before completing it. For each medication you are required to complete, you'll include the medication, dose, route, frequency, and the indication for this patient, primary side effects, as well as the dosage calculation. Please pause the video to review the example provided. The next page is dedicated to the calculation of maintenance fluids, your fluid intake calculation, and your urine output calculation. Please review 
the dosage calc video for a detailed discussion of calculating maintenance fluids. And remember, your urine output is always expressed in mLs per kilo per hour. In the next section, you will provide a comprehensive overview of your patient, including your physical assessment. For each body system, describe the active problems, your physical assessment, any subjective data, nursing interventions, medications, and desired outcomes. Additionally, there are also other assessment pieces that you will complete, such as the pain assessment pictured here. You will complete one section each for neurological, cardiovascular and respiratory, gastrointestinal and genital urinary, hematology, infectious disease, and psychosocial. The last section of your clinical packet is dedicated to reflection and feedback. Please fill out the student section and present to your clinical instructor every week. Your clinical instructor will provide comments, strengths, and areas for improvement. Remember, you can view examples of completed packets in Bolt. Thank you for watching.